on another adventure. This time I've got my lovely little son with me, Joel. Okay, guys. He's uh, going to give us a bit of a helping hand with the school holidays at the moment. So um, we're heading up to our Wanganui block. We've got another father and son uh, duo to take out hunting. Um, and they're from Auckland. The weather forecast, we've had to delay the hunt um, or postpone it for a day later as the weather has been absolutely atrocious lately. Oh, just, just pull out in front of that guy. Um, but we have got some good weather coming. The forecast says it's supposed to be clearing up a little bit this afternoon and then the next day is supposed to get better and better from there. So we've got two days to get these guys. I think they want four deer and possibly a couple more just depending on how we go. So. Um, we've got the 22 in there, Joel's going to knock over a couple of rabbits and bits and pieces and we're going to have a look in some new area on this block, so it's, a, it's quite a big block and I haven't managed to um, explore most of it yet, we've only done a small part because there's so many deer that we don't need to really spread out too much, but I am going to start spreading out now because we're getting busier and busier, so um, come along with us and see how we get along, cheers! Take two. Take two. Yeah. You go first, Nigel. I'll wait until you finish. No, I, I, I thought I was just going to say I'm Nigel and then you were going to take over no, and do yours. I can't. <laughs> G'day, I'm Nigel. And this is my dad. Hi, I'm John. I've come down here to own your art of hunting. Hopefully to get a bit of meat. And um, I've now retired. And trying to take it a bit easy uh, after 35 years at one job. I'm looking forward to a good hunt. Awesome, mate. And you've done a bit of hunting in your in the past, John? Yeah, over the years. Unfortunately, uh, our wife was very sick in the last 25 years. I spent time, uh, most of my time looking after her. I got out a couple of times in the last 20 odd years. And. Um, now, hopefully, to get more onto it and do a bit more hunting. Yep, oh, awesome, mate. Um, and you're actually just telling us a story off camera there about a 400 pound bloody boar that you got somewhere. It was. Um... Yeah, um, we got a, a boar, um, uh, the Coromandel. Um, I think he'd been crossbred with a domesticated pig, but when we got caught him, we got him out, he was 410 pounds with his stomach out and um, he'd obviously been caught before because he, he, was, he wasn't a boar, he was a barra and they would taken his top grinders out and his tusks had grown complete circles and starting to go back into his jaw. Shit, yeah. incredible way. Eh? I had four men with me that were up trees telling me I couldn't go in there because he's as big as a cow. We had to go in because the dog had him and, and the flex, or flex bushes, so we got him anyway. That can be pretty awesome, eh? Yeah. There's not many people would be able to have said they've experienced that sort of experience. No, no. That's awesome, John. I'm not an experienced hunter. 
I've been out a couple of times with my dad. The last time I was out, we would have been about oh, 20 odd years ago. Um, went into the Boyd hut and heard some deer, but never got to actually see any uh, in yep. the wild. So I'm looking forward to actually spotting my first deer uh, out in the bush and hopefully shooting my first deer. Um, I'm a father of five, so uh, over the last few years I haven't had much of an opportunity to get out, but now that my kids' youngest are now 18, it's my time to have some fun, so I was really wrapped when Dad said, oh, I've organised the trip for us, we're going away, so I'm really looking forward to having a bit of, a luck, bit of luck and shooting my first year, hopefully. Yeah, awesome, mate. Well, hopefully um, I can come up for the goods with you. I'm pretty sure we should be able to find something. Um, and it'll be bloody cool to take yourself out to get your first deer. I've, take, I've lost count of how many guys I've taken out to get their first deer, so we should be able to do that for you, no problems at all. Yeah. Um, I've got my young fella with me, so we've got um, father and son there, and father and son here, he's young Joel. You, you want to say anything, Joel? No. You're a man of a few words, aren't you, really? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, the weather forecast we've got on this trip, guys, we've had to... Um, Basically extend, or not extend it, we, we postponed it a day because we had that big front come through from down south that um, is still coming through at the moment basically. So we're hoping it's going to clear up a little bit this afternoon and um, give us some good weather. But we've got two days to get um, four deer is, is the goal and anything else is a bonus. The boys are quite keen to take some extra deer on top of that as well. So I'm pretty sure we should be able to come up with the goods for two days. Um, so we'll just see how we go. So keep following and grab a coffee, grab a beer and see how we get along. Cheers. All right, so the boys all geared up. We've come up with a bit of a plan. Um, the owner come down and told us a little handy spot where we can go and have a look tonight, um, which is bloody perfect. The weather looks like it might be starting to clear up a bit as well, which will be even better. Giving the boys a bit of a rundown, or well, mostly Nige, he hasn't shot a deer before. Um, John's shot quite a few. Nige knows where to shoot them now. And, use of the trigger on the rifle and that sort of stuff. Today we're going to be using the Ticker T3 and 308. Um, it's cut down with the 16 inch barrel on it so it's a nice little weapon. This is my rifle with a 6x12x50 by by scope on there, lure pole. Um, she's a nice little weapon and that's deadly accurate out to about 350 meters but we won't be doing any long shots today. We'll hopefully it's in under 200 if it's all going well. So uh, yeah, let's get into it eh? Not ideal with it. Give us an update there, Nige. I'm freezing. My fingers are like, uh, they are still there, but I don't know. I've got no feeling. In them. <laughs> but it was still enjoyable. <laughs> yeah, so um, oh, we set up on the hill there, and uh, the parry started squawking and carrying on, and then the sheep started running a bit. And so we sat there for an hour, two hours, and uh, 
just froze our asses off and then a nice big shower rain just started coming in the last sort of 20 minutes before dark so we decided just to pull the pin. Luckily we've got two nights up here so the pressure's not on as much to get a deer on the first night so first night no deer. Um, bit of cold ass. <laughs> cold fingers. So uh, yeah we'll start again in the morning hopefully this forecast is right in the morning but it said it was going to clear up tonight but it didn't. Um, yeah, so hopefully the morning clears up and uh, we have a bit more luck in the morning. So my mate down in Nelson there from nzhuntingproducts.co.nz has sent me some of these beeswax um, fire starters to try out. So um, they're not like your normal fire starter. They've got, um, they're wrapped in beeswax and I actually thought they had a fire starter wrapped up in the beeswax but it's not, it's actually like a bit of really dry wood or something, I'm not too sure what, what, what it's made of, but um, they do have their advantages, so if you have got a normal fire starter and you want to chuck it in, in your day bag, in a plastic bag, what I've found over the years is they have that fire starter smell and that goes through anything, so if you've got any water bars or any food in your bag, it goes right through, it taints the whole thing. Um, these things here are 100% waterproof as well, so you can submerge them in water and um, light them, and they also don't give off that smell. So. Yeah, beeswax, um, the information is there on the back of the card. So we're going to put these to the test. So you can use them for hunting, you know, for lighting your fire, or obviously for lighting your fire, um, or you can use them for everyday use in your house as well. I um, don't know the price, so you might have to give this guy a ring, which is, um, he's got a phone number here. But yeah, so beeswax, we'll try them out. Um, what I've found with them is they do take a little bit to get lighted. So once you've got them lit though, they seem to burn for a while. Um, they say on here about six to 10 minutes they'll burn for. So could be quite good if you've got a bit of wet wood or something like that. Um, but there is a few downsides, like I say with the wind, um, which would blow them out quite easily. But there's a few upsides to it as well, being waterproof, not having the smell. So here's one of the bees wicks um, fire starters we've got here. Um, and we're just going to put them to the test, so... So they take a little bit to get started. Obviously. And obviously drip a little bit of wax as well, so you don't want to drip that onto your carpet. So I've just been using these like a normal fire starter, but it's the beauty about these as well that you don't have to cut your kingling wood. You can use um, bits of wood because they burn for so long. Um, you can chuck them in here and this wood here is reasonably dry. You stuck it, chuck them around here. You don't have to use small bits of wood because it burns for a while. So as you can see, they um, definitely light the fire, but um, the only disadvantage with these, I think, would be that they take a little while to actually light, and they drip a little bit of wax, so you've got to be careful if you're using them inside. But once you've got them going, you know, they go good and burn for a while, so if you've got wet wood um, and you're out in the bush, that could be an advantage but you also want a pretty sheltered spot to light them and you want a lighter to light them with because matches just won't cut it you'll run out of match space before it actually ignites um, and the other advantage with them is that they don't smell um, and they're waterproof as well and there's probably quite a few of other advantages and um, I'm sure if you go and buy some and try them out and you'll be able to sort of decide for yourself whether you like them or not so that's the Beeswix fire starters if you want to um, get any of those, there's their card, and there's their contact there. And um, give them a buzz, and see if you can get some, and try them out for yourselves. So, they seem to light the fire as good as gold, but um, like I said before, they just take a little bit to get started, but once they start, they're away, and uh, you'll have yourself a nice wee warm fire but if you need to find out any more information about these beeswax fire starters contact um, huntingproducts.co.nz and they should be able to give you the price I don't even know the price of them but 
they should be able to give you the price and give you a bit more information on where you can purchase them from. Beeswax. Tonka 20 litre on there. Perfect size for kids. But um, got to where we were last night, so we're just going to duck over the hill and see if we can find a deer over here. We're going well. We've already spotted one 200 metres from camp, but it was a young buck, so we decided to leave it. But yeah, we're going to have a look, eh? Righty oh Nodge, what do you reckon? Oh great Clayton, thanks very much mate. I'm really uh, still buzzing, you know, it was great. The first one I've shot, so looking forward to shooting the next one. Now so that I know where to shoot. Now you've done, done a good job on that one mate, just a little bit low. Um, but like you say, now that you've shot this one, you can see where to shoot them. So um, we just had to finish this one off with, with a bit of a headshot. Fixed it up though and it rolled straight down off the track for us, it was even better. And um, we've just spotted another 15 over on the next ridge, so we're going to quickly gut this one out and um, try and get another one if we can. And the weather's cleared up, so we've broken that curse. <laughs> I think we might have had a bit of a curse to start with. Everything wasn't going well. The parries were squawking, and the rain was raining, and the wind was blowing, and yeah, so but uh, and everything was fucking toey as. So um, hopefully we've broken that curse now, mate, and she should be just a smooth, smoothy ride from now on. <laughs> yeah, things made on on wrapped anyway, you know, great. No, awesome brother, and you got some um got some little antlers to take home as well. Yes. Generally we don't sort of focus on on the on the bucks, but um this fella's only a young fella, but uh he possibly could have grown into something he's not going to now, but the one that was with him was uh, quite a nice one. He, if he casts his antler he's gonna be a good buck next year. And we've seen a number of bucks running around the place as well, so taking the odd one out isn't gonna hurt. So um yeah. We'll whip the guts out, carry on, see if we can find another one, eh? Alright. So there's a little mob of deer over there. So we're going to have to go right around the top here and come down the ridge. We've got a good wind, it's blowing straight in our face at the moment, so rather than riding the bikes around here and risking spooking them, because at the moment any sort of noise of the quad, everything's just getting up and bolting and not stopping. Um, so we're just going to beat the feet and hopefully we can get around and get the, get the advantage on, on these deer. So, yeah, see how we go.
get behind. Good shot. Hold up, get him behind, get him behind. Over there, mate, running down the bridge where the goats are. Me, me. Blake, stop it. Nice work, mate. There you go, one on the ridge here. Straight at it, mate. Oh, I, yeah, they've gone. Get them behind. Behind. Nice, mate. Two just on the track like that. <laughs> Good stuff. Awesome shooting there, Nodge. Good stuff, brother. Thank you, Clayton. <laughs> that worked out good then. And I think I shot those better. Yeah, no, you hit them perfect. The old 308, when you hit them in the right spot, hey, they, they don't go too far. Beautiful. Cool. Cool. Takes the pressure off a bit. <laughs> nice work, mate. Got all that on camera, too. Oh, cool, man. Good stuff. First, second, and third deer on the first morning. Good stuff, mate. Oh Blakey, yeah, he's still fucking squeaky. Get him behind. You need to stop that, mate. Want me to put another tool in here? Yeah, mate, for me, I might as well fill that mag back up. You just never know. Good stuff. So the boys are... They walk from over there. Awesome, mate. He's Joe up there on the hill. So we walked around the head of that gully just so we didn't disturb those deer too much and uh, the plan worked well worked fantastically well awesome yeah got you loud and clear there buddy yeah mate he smoked two with two shots worked out a tree about uh, 50 meters away yeah oh well mate these are two deer as they as they fell just like that. And see how your voices travel? Yeah. yeah. Hey. You can see well that, how they pick you up. Yeah, mate. Well, oh, that quad, luckily we didn't ride the quads around there, they would have just been gone. But um, those of you, sort of, you know, like I say about keeping your voice down that when you're hunting, and lots of hunters obviously know that anyway. But um, the boys are way over on that ridge up there. Look, you can see the silhouettes up there up there which will be over a pay away and uh, we can hear them talking quite clearly so yeah these deer would have heard us coming a mile away if we rode the quad around there but no fantastic oh we'll sort these out and see if we can find some more eh? Yeah. so three down for the morning oh never expected to even get one to be honest <laughs> <laughs> i'm absolutely stoked awesome buddy that's what it's all about um, so we started off a bit slow, but um, you know, sometimes you get that and I think we might have had a little bit of a curse on us to start with, the wind and the rain and the parries and everything wasn't really going right and then um, once we shot that buck earlier on there, um, the sun came out just about straight away and, uh, and then we spotted these ones and then we did the stalk around here and got up into within 50 metres of them and um, Nigel pulled off two nice good clean shots and dropped them both on the spot with the old 308 with 155 grain Amexes and their ticker T3 which is a fantastic rifle and I've got a 3 by 12 by 50 scope on there uh, Leopold which is a fantastic scope as well but um, Steiner are also good scopes as well I highly recommend people who haven't done this to come and have a go it's uh, so adrenalating and I can understand why hunters get the urge now that I've got my first kills but yeah but look at there Blake a big morning <laughs> alright bikes all loaded up for the venison so we'll um, cruise on back out, back to the cottage for a bit of breakfast and then um, if we're lucky we might be able to pick up another one on the way out, see what happens. <laughs> Man. Okay, just found this um, young buck dead in the paddock. Here's a look at that broken antler there, Joel. Snapped his antler off. Um, not too sure if there's no bullet holes in him or anything, so I don't think he's been shot. He's just died. Possibly have got a tine in his guts or something like that. He looks like some good neck. But, oh, oh, poor bugger. Alright, so we've got the um, the master deer finder here with us today. <laughs> He's going to show us a, a new spot we haven't been to. So um, we've got the the new ticker strata there. 
John's going to give that a go today, 270, and um, Nigel is going to use the 308, so hopefully we can find a couple of deer venturing into a new block. Bang. Right, so um, Dave's just brought us up into some new country here, and uh, Jesus, <laughs> it's bloody fantastic for those of you that are booked in for future hunts, um, you're going to do pretty good. Uh, we've probably seen 40 odd deer just driving up here at 3 o'clock in the afternoon just off the motorbike and um, could have shot them but we've just been looking at the new area and we've still got a huge area to look at all the way back up there to the way up there to the skyline um, and all this country down here it's just wicked. Get him behind. God, you excitable cunt. Good stuff, mate. You just went a bit high on that first shot. Yep. He was only a little fella, but at least you got one on the start. Like we brought those bullets, eh? <laughs> nice, mate. Typical what jumped and ran down the hill. Blake, get him behind. No, it shouldn't have gone very far for the old 308 in your shoulder. Basically, and dropped. Drop. Oh, yeah, awesome Empty. rifle safe. Just decock that so lift the bolt up again, finger on the trigger, and shut the bolt at the same time. You need both hands, sort of thing. Yep, beautiful. Thank you. So, Mr. Overexcited, he knows that we've got a deer and he's hanging out to go down there. Ah, ah. <laughs> Hanging out to go down there, aren't you? Hanging out. All I have to do is give him the magic word and you watch him take off like a rocket. Blake, where's the deer? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you can, I know he's still alive. Good boy, Blakey. Good boy. Where's the deer? Good boy. Well done. Thanks Clayton, uh, first deer, uh, we've seen plenty, first one had a chance to have a shot at, um, and we succeeded. Succeeded, so how long has it been since you shot your last deer mate? Uh, probably 18 months ago. Oh yeah, yep, yeah, yeah. Uh, fantastic. So the reason why John missed on that first shot, um, I've got the mill dots on my scope there and he, he put it on the first dot which is 200 metres and that deer would have only been about 100 and 20 I'd say, so um, that's why the bullet went just over his back but um, yeah, the second shot did the damage um, so we're in a beautiful beautiful place as you've seen on the video there um, Dave's just showed us this new area that we've got access to uh, so yeah, like I said before, you guys that are booked in for future hunts are gonna you've got a treat basically, it's fantastic and they're all good conditioned animals, this one's a bit small, it's a little yearling, last year's fawn but it'll be delicious eating 
So we're at perfect time now. We're going to walk back down this creek. We're just going to bunny hop off the bikes down the creek here and um, hopefully pick up another couple on the way out. Awesome. Number two. Yeah. Really pleased with that one. And a nice little leader. Beautiful little animal. And kid. Fantastic condition. Man, put him from down there. Number two. Yeah, number two. Uh, Clayton just went up the hill and bought a bound for the old fella. No, nah, mate, awesome. So we've just got one more to get, and yeah, you've got your... Two more, or however... Okay, no, good as gold. Uh, we've still got a bit of daylight left, so we'll whip the, whip the guts out of this one and carry on down the track, eh? Yep. Mate. Up there, bro. That was great adrenaline. <laughs> One, two, three, just like that. Wow. Here we are, walked around all morning to find three deer, and we come up to this spot here, and we've just shot five. <laughs> just like that. That's awesome. Mean, and they're relatively handy to the track, too. Awesome, mate. And believe it or not, we just shot a deer right there about half an hour ago, <laughs> three quarters of an hour, and me and uh, John. John um, and Nigel. Nigel, I'm terrible. <laughs> Everyone knows I'm terrible. <laughs> um, yeah, me and Nigel just started walking out the track. We hadn't even moved. The bike's just driven up here as well. The bikes are there. We walked about fucking 50 meters down there, looked up, and what well, there's four there, weren't there? Yeah. Four just there. Oblivious to those shots, but they must have been just on the other side of that ridge when we shot that deer, and the bikes turned up and just fed their way around. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> That's, that's pretty good. Main. So the story carries on. So we're just laughing about how crazy that worked out. And then uh, we just heard a kaboom from the old 270 Tika Strata down there. And these old bloody John's just nailed another one just up on the other side of this ridge up here. <laughs> Blake doesn't know which direction to go. You just about stuffed that up for us though, buddy. You're fucking squeaking. Fantastic. Do you want to race up there and drag that one down to the track, Joel? We'll drag these ones down. Awesome. 
<sighs> right, so uh, yeah, well, we just finished gutting one deer and just going to move off, and four more appeared. And uh, Nigel and Kate went uh, went up the hill, and um, and they managed to get three of them. The other one took off, and he stopped about 195 meters away, and I managed to pole axe him. With the uh, finished up with the four deer. Yeah. With the nice. Um with uh, Tika. Sarko, Sarko? That's Tika, same, Sorry, same. Tika, um, 270. 270 Strata. Strata. Yep, and that's got the 3 by 15 by 50 Steiner scope on it. So 200 metres, it just snotted it, basically. Yeah. yeah. Awesome, so that's nine deer you guys have got now. Thank you. She bounced up from bloody three pretty fast, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, certainly yeah. Oh, this, this spot here is fucking amazing. Um, so yeah, we, this is the first time I've been up this gully. I'm pretty sure we'll find the track out. So we'll whip the guts out of these ones and um, find our track out of here. And you never know, the boys might want to shoot another one on the way out. We'll see what happens. See what happens. I pretty much guarantee we're going to see some on the way out anyway. Awesome, guys. Good stuff. Righty. Got the bloody... All the gear loaded up. All the deer and the gear. They're loaded up there. So there's three on that one. And there's another three on that one there. So yeah, awesome. Boys are done well. Fantastically well. Oh well, we'll get back and um, have a feed. I was going to cook a roast, but we're not going to have time for waiting <laughs> for that to cook. So lucky I've got a nice shepherd's pie there for us. So we... Awesome, it's going to take us a little while to get out of here. Maybe half an hour, three quarters of an hour back to the cottage, I guess. Awesome, good work, Joel. He did well, mate, helping us out there. What would you think of that little 20 litre um, Tatonka day bag? Good. It's really comfy when I'm walking around up the pools and stuff. Yeah. And um, you got all your drink bottle and a bit of food and your spare jacket and all that sort of stuff in there. Yep. So what do you reckon of it, Joel? For a kid's bag? It's good, I reckon. Yep. Awesome, mate. It's easy to get your stuff out of. Just handy stuff like your knife and stuff. Yep, in that top torches. pocket. Oh, and then you can put your drink bottle on the side there like Joel's done it as well. And main, awesome, mate. Thanks for going up the hill and grabbing that deer for me as well. Right. And uh, what do you think of that lead lens of torch on your head? Good. It's the H14, the old old school one. So Joel got my old torch and I've got the MH11, which is a fantastic torch I've got on my head. But they're bloody fantastic headlamps, eh? Awesome headlamps. That one's rechargeable as well, so don't have to worry about sort of buying brand new batteries, which are bloody expensive these days. Awesome. Oh, well, we'll head back to the hut and get some kai into us because I'm... Good boy, bloke. A few deer hanging up there, eh, mate? The morning after. So, these boys done pretty well. Nine deer in total. Good boy, bloke. What's that, eh? Good boy. Yeah, so you fellas have done uh, pretty good? Yeah, yeah. We had a good shoot, good hunt. And um, well, now the work begins and the processing. Yep, now we've got to whip uh, the skins the off these. The head for home. I mean, anybody's looking for a good hunt, give Clayton a ring. You know? uh, tremendous. A great mate. And um, yeah, he'll look after you well. Awesome. Thank you. Right. Hey, thanks, John. No, that's bloody fantastic. And what about you, mate? First time uh, first time out hunting, was it? Not out hunting, but at first time getting a kill. Getting um, a kill. Great, great time shooting my first deer. I was a bit off on my first shot, but quickly learnt and uh, ended up shooting six deer. So I'm absolutely wrapped and pretty much going to be addicted to hunting now, <laughs> you know. So... Uh, like to thank you Clayton, um, you're a great uh, guide, not oh. just a great guide, a great bloke all around, you oh, know, bloody hell. Thanks, pretty man. decent and thoroughly enjoyed myself and I'll be bringing my own boys and girls down if they want to come from a hunt, so you've got repeat business definitely from from us mate, you know, and thoroughly enjoy it. Awesome mate, now that's what I like to hear, it's good positive feedback like that, that's fantastic and Likewise, you fellas are, are good buggers as well. Good. It's always a pleasure taking guys like yourselves out. Um, some bloody awesome stories there from John and that from back in the day and stuff. So, 
that's fantastic. But uh, like what John said before, the easy bit was shooting them. Um, now the work begins, so we've just got to whip the skins off and break a few of these deer down and, and fire them into the chilli bins there. But um, I think we'll make that a bit of a wrap. We might get a little bit of footage of skinning these deer, but it's all pretty much the same as usual. So, um, yeah, once again, thanks again for watching, and if you want to book a hunt, um, get in touch with us. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you on the next video. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe, and, yeah, we'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Thanks, Clayton. No worries, mate.